Alrighty, what is going on you guys? It is your boy White Album here and welcome back to some more Witch on the Holy Night. Last time we left off, we finally finished the Carnegie case. I think that's how you say that's been how I've been saying that for like the past few episodes, but it no longer matters because we finally finished it. We're done and dusted with that little side story and now we're back on the main story. So here we go. We are finally on episode whatever the hell this is. So here we go. This time I got my water on me. No tea this time. I'll be honest, I made my mouth a lot drier <laughs> than uh, than usual whenever I play this game. But here we go. We are on the new episode, Scarred, Scar, Red. Let's get started. So, December, the month when even monks were busy at work. It was the culmination of the of the year. Perhaps due to all the put-off tasks that build up through the seasons, the month always seems to pass by in the blink of an eye. It was a day, like any other in December. Episode 9, Scarred, Scar, Red. Though none of them were any the wiser of to what the others were doing, Aoko, Alice, and Sojo had spent the day attending to their own affairs. Or you can get off the screen now. Nani, kore. What is this? Suppressing the urge to murder someone. <laughs> We're already starting with this? Alright. Her terrifying voice boomed across the room. The sunroom was often used to dine in when the weather was nice, since it overlooked the, uh, the courtyard. I'm gonna say countryside. Same shit, right? It was a room decorated with high-quality furniture and upholstery, befitting in a historic western-style mansion. The fusion of Chinese Chippendale aesthetics and traditional English uh, Georgian elegance caused even Aoko, a commoner, to think twice about doing anything un-aristocratic on the grounds. Truthfully, she was sickened by the flagrant waste of money, but none of it was paid out for uh, paid out for what? Paid or out of her pocket. There you go. She could have cared less what the purchaser spent their money on. Three unbelievably out of place offerings sat atop the lavish sunroom's table, as if enshrined. In stark contrast to the room, they appeared like meals prepared by aliens. So, Juro, Kore, Nanka, Tarashi, Jordan. So, Juro. Is this your idea of a practical joke? Oko's trembling fist clenched and unclenched, as she questioned the one responsible for today's menu. The clock struck nine in the evening. The chef in charge nodded dutifully, eager to explain. It's a new product from my workplace. Konami said it looks and tastes fake, but honestly, I think it'd be I think it's better than the real thing. Besides, they're only forty yen each after the company discount. A steal, right? Even with the egg on top, it's still only sixty yen or so. The lackluster chef seemed pleased with himself as he boasted. Alko wanted to grumble that the real steal was her appetite. So, you got done, eh? Well, what's wrong with it? It looks like it's just noodles, broth, and an egg. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I'd, I'd fuck that up personally. I, I'll be honest. I would, I would eat that. Maybe not every day, but I, I'd try it. Well, isn't that nice for you? Now, where's tonight's dinner? The chef thought for a second or two, then clapped his hands together in revelation. Aozaki, so many eat so much. Damn. <laughs> oh my god, I just read that. I didn't even. I haven't said it yet, and I know this man fucked up. All right, here we go. Aozaki. You know, if you eat too much, you'll get fat. So, 
So what you're telling me is this is dinner? No complaints. I'm not making anything else. Okay, the fact that he survived this encounter is crazy. <laughs> Alice is like, how is he still alive? Well, here we go. The two stood there, glaring at each other. Alko gave off an air that said she would rather die than eat his food. While Sojo was convinced that she would... What the fuck? Capitulate? Eventually. So confident, he even considered challenging her about being so picky. As usual, the two could not see eye to eye. No way. There's no way I'm eating whatever the hell this is. Don't be such a spoiled princess. Besides, tonight's dinner only cost 200 yen for the three of us. Sojiro puffed his chest out as his penny pitching prowess. Alice altered her gaze between the two quarreling roommates and the strange food before her, which she had never seen before. She remained a mere bystander in all of this. Unbelievable! A 60 yen meal for one person? What year is this? These days, even new beef bowl restaurants cost more than that in ingredients, you dip. Aozaki. Azaki, if we ate like you wanted with only 30,000 yen for food each month, I'm pretty sure we would all starve to death before you two could kill me. I mean, sure, the meat Alice cooked yesterday was really something. I was impressed at the difference in quality at 700 yen per ounce. Even the 100% juice from the co-op made me rethink the idea of fresh food. Uh, but if we keep eating like, like we have for the last three days, we'll go broke. Sojo was making perfect sense, for once. Fortunately, neither Alko nor Sojo noticed the silent stare of disapproval coming, uh, coming from Alice. Look, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And I should note, a meal like yesterday's was a rarity. But maybe I should thank you, since your meals have inspired Alice to put some effort into hers for a change. With the Alko's words, Alice closed her eyes. She may, uh, she might have been trying to quell her anger. Uh, you astonish me, you know? How did you even get by before me? We made it work, thank you very much. Besides, living life one step from starvation keeps you on your toes. You know you're talking to the guy that lived in the countryside all his fucking life, right? <sighs> Her brazen response left him speechless. Though a story from another time, uh, though a story for another time, Sojourn remembered a warning from a certain vice president who was complaining about a certain president ins uh, insistently bugging him to take her to lunch at the end of the month. But that was neither here nor there. That was then. And this is now. Where are those cooking skills you displayed before, Sojiro? That's the only reason I trusted you with today's meal. Out of everything, that seemed to be what ate Aoko the most. The stir fried uh, yaki, don, uh, yaki udon that he prepared previously had been very well received. And it even melted away Aoko's morning grumpiness with just one bite. However, 
Sojuro had not seen fit to tell them that it was one of the only dishes in his limited repertoire. For a bachelor, the ability to cook is as close to a superpower as one could get. Fifteen years into the future, it would likely become a highly desirable trait. Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong there. Regardless, that misunderstanding had led Aoko and Alice to overestimate Sojuro's culinary talents. Her ire finally made sense to Sojuro. Alright, fine. We can order in. There's nothing here to cook anyway. But only if you clear up. Alko basked in her victory. It was then, after seeing Sojuro's face as he went to fetch the delivery menu, Alko realized her misreading of him. What annoyed Awoko the most was the fact that such little effort was put into dinner. But to Sojuro, this dinner had not been about cutting corners, but rather about a meal he had legitimately wanted to try. Aoko ruminated on how it could possibly pass as food for someone raised in the mountains. And then... Hmm? Alice? What are you doing? Alice noticed, uh, Aoko noticed Alice standing near the table holding one of the bowls tightly. Would you put that down already? We need to give those back to Sojuro so we can eat a proper meal. Despite Aoko's words, Alice stood her ground, firmly clutching the bowl. In fact, she seemed to be embracing it. This one is mine. Alice's faint voice drifted across the sunroom. And just like that, the knight's menu had been decided upon... Wait, what? Had been decided by majority rule. Aoko's shoulders sank in disappointment at her lot that evening. Come to think of it, Alice was always peculiar about things she deemed were hers. Again, I don't know why fucking Aoko shrimp is literally just noodles and an egg. That's not... Brother, that, that's, that's enough, <laughs> you know? Not to sound fat, but that's a snack right there. What the fuck? It was morning, and there were ten days left in December. While the rest of the city were preparing for Christmas festivities, Sojuro headed to his part-time job. Though it looked like it could snow at any minute, the tree-lined streets were bustling with people. These days were particularly merry. Students on winter break spent their days hanging out with friends while they counted down the days until seasonal holidays. A flashy banner for Christmas cakes. Huge advertisements adorning the building's fronts. The station plaza bustling with pop-up stalls. From among the crowd in this uh, heaving district, Sodro stepped onto the phone or stepped onto into a phone booth. Safe from the winter wind, the inside seemed worn by comparison. The thought that it would actually be nice to have one in the mountains crossed his mind as he entered a coin into the phone. He dialed a number from memory, his hand moving on its own. About five seconds, the phone began to ring. Another five seconds, another ring. Ten seconds had passed. He gazed through the window at the various signs on the surrounding buildings and marveled at the sheer number of people out and about so early. He dialed the number that was for Tobimaro Tsukiji. The Tsukiji name was well known in Misaki as distinguished landowning family going back generations. Incidentally, the residence was located in the neighboring town of Yashirogi. The ringtone was finally replaced by the kind voice of an elderly woman. After her polite greeting, she handed over the phone to Sojuro's target. Ohayo, Tobimaru. Morning, Tobimaru. Hi. Ohayo. Uh, yeah, uh, morning. He was still half asleep, or so it sounded to Sojuro. I need to ask you something. Do you have a second? 
Yeah. Speak. His response did not exactly inspire confidence in Sojiro, but he cut right to the chase. The vice president's pause was a long one. It was hard to read from this end of the receiver. This is what you wake me up for? Listen here, Sojiro. If she's mad at you, take her out somewhere. Try to butter her up. Show her a good time. If that doesn't do the trick, then cut her loose. What do you want me to say? With the piece, Tobimaru hung up. It may have been 10 in the morning to Sojiro, but after dealing with what seemed like a 6 o'clock Tobimaru, all he could do was accept his advice. All he, he could say he liked about the guy's tone, but deep down he knew that his advice was sound. After the foreign, foreign, <laughs> I try to read phone and ordeal at the same time, so I said foreign. That sounds a little too close to another word. But after the phone ordeal, I almost said it again, I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. Sojo finished up his shopping and returned to the mansion just before noon. He was greeted by the sight of Aoko and Alice sitting in silent gloom. Though unsure of the circumstances, from the outside looking in, it seemed like the aftermath of an argument. It was similar to the calm after a violent blizzard accompanied by biting winds and stinging hail, or a similar atmosphere to the inside of an industrial freezer. It would not have been surprising to look up and see icicles hanging from the ceiling. Ah, uh, they're at it again. He felt like a zookeeper, pained to see the raccoon and penguin at each other's throats. Alright, who's the raccoon and who's the penguin? Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, fuck, who would be the penguin? I, I, I want to say Alice, because penguins are kind of, you know, they keep to themselves. And then you have Aoko, who would be a raccoon, because raccoons can be mischievous as fuck. So that fits perfectly, yeah. Aoko is the raccoon, and Alice is the penguin, and Sojiro is the fucking zookeeper. <laughs> he has seen this at his job at the zoo, where he was a cleaner. Sojiro found himself staring at, the, at them with a familiar forlorn of the zookeeper. Needless to say, the silence meant that they were not fighting at this moment. Dinner served as a respite respite from the infighting. Sojiro was ob oblivious to the circumstances surrounding the quarrel, but their day-in, day-out battles against the mysterious mage was clearly taken a toll. Not that Alice looks anything but grumpy. Facing a quiet and contemplative Aoko, Alice was reading an old book now sat on her lap, as she was accustomed to. The book seemed somehow heavier than the other ones. I'm home. Looks like I made it in time for truce. He asked them as he took off his coat. If only. A truce would mean we're getting somewhere. No, you're way off, Sojuro. Hmm? Without quite knowing what Aoka was getting at, Sojuro quizzically tilted his head. He told himself not to think too hard into it, but he could not entirely help it. Besides, a truce would mean an agreement had been reached. This is more of a temporary ceasefire. Seemingly too preoccupied to scold Sojiro, Aoko waved her hand as though shooing off an insect. But Sojiro being Sojiro... Okay, let me rephrase that. Yeah. So, any progress then? Sojiro was not willing to give up and held his ground. That's none of your business. Well, when his life is on the line, yeah, it is his fucking business. But, you know, I'm not going to get back into that whole ordeal. <laughs> I've been done with that a while now. 
What did I tell you? Mage affairs are not for your ears. Not when he has a thing on his neck that t slowly tines whenever you get mad at him, but heck. But I, again, not going into that. Her response was calm, but sharp. Surliness was her weapon of choice, and today she seemed determined to swing it at will. Ah, uh, yes, I remember. Did you two eat yet? Sajiro chose to brush off Aoko's attitude. If Aoko's weapon was surliness, Sojiro was bl what the fuck? Blithne blith blithness? Is that a word? <laughs> what what the hell? What is this vocabulary, man? And he wielded just enough to make Aoko flinch. What's with you today? You're more upbeat than usual. Sajiro shrugged his shoulders. I'm here. I'm not sure. I just have a good feeling about today. By the way, I have a proposal for you. He said as he dug around in the pocket for his uh of his now hung up coat. Alko gave a puzzled stare while Alice's ears perked up at how positive he sounded. I got paid today, which means I have money, which means we should go out and do something. He spoke with a warm smile as he removed his wallet from his coat pocket. The other two did not, did not know what to make of it. Sojuro. Sojuro? She wanted to take exception to his bright mood, but found herself wrestling with the idea of reacting positively to it. After all, he was making a gesture of good faith to try and make things better with what little funds he had. The thought itself was not a bad one, and she wanted to accept his earnest goodwill, but there was always the chance that Alice would keep quiet until the slightest thing annoyed her, and at which point she would dash all their plans. However, she was not in the mood to walk around town with either of the two, nor was the time ideal. Or the time ideal. Sorry, but I'm kind of busy. I'll take you up on it some other time, though. Just remind me. Alice seemed to give the same response, though wordlessly. Sojo was not to be was not to be what what Sojo was not about to be held back by the sullen mood. Really? Busy doing what? Sitting here in silence? Wasn't it you, Aozaki? That said a change of pace was important when staying up all night. Sometimes you need to take one step back to take two steps forward. Sojiro spoke with unusual confidence as he drew two tickets from his wallet and slapped them on the table. At first glance, they looked like advanced tickets to a movie, but not quite. They were tickets to a famous aquarium. To get there, they would need to take the rapid train and subway to a city several times more modern than Misaki, a city that housed the biggest shopping mall in the prefecture. Set to open next year, as well as a multi a multi-purpose auditorium big enough to stage international conferences and famous plays. Soreto, Oh, and eat some curry at Messian on me. Messian like like Lionel Messi? Holy shit, bro. You know he got signed to Inter Miami, bro? That's crazy. I'm more of an Orlando City fan, but you know, they haven't been doing doing too great lately. Saying that, he slapped two bills on the table as if he had struck it rich. It was Sojiro's turn to make dinner tonight after all. Ah, uh, be seeing you. Finished saying his piece, Sojiro returned his wallet to his coat pocket. It was then that Aoko realized what Sojiro meant by seeing you. You mean you're not coming with us? I have work tonight. Sojiro was almost too quick with his response, helping Aoko to see things for what it really were, for what they really were. Rather than for Sojiro's benefit, he ge his gesture was att an attempt to ease the tension that had been built up between Aoko and Alice. 
Though if asked, both girls would tell you it was an unnecessary gesture. However, for him to pay this much attention to the household, if anything, gave a local reason to reflect on her own immaturity. Uh. Alka glanced over to the still-seated Alice. At the same time, Alice peeked up at Aoko from behind her book. They kept still, staring at each other. I'll go if you go. I'm almost done with my book. Okay, it would be a waste not to. Alice stood up from the sofa, resigned to her decision. Sojo watched on, a satisfied, a satisfied smile on his face. Twenty minutes later, as Aoko and Alice were done getting ready, Aoko called out to Sojo in the drawing room. Alright, we're leaving now. Uh, Sojiro? Sojiro was crouched in front of the television, unaware that the two had entered the room. Don't tell me the VCR is on Fritz again. Man, when the oh, hell was the last time I saw it? Oh, this is good. Oh, hey, good timing. How do I. As he turned to face them, he froze. My man really this mystified, bro? Oh. And facing them only exacerbated the problem. Hmm? You okay? Listen, we're taking you up on your offer and going out. Did you drop something behind the TV unit again? Unit? What? Sojiro appeared to have gone stiff. I don't think that's the right wording. Uh, Aoko stared at him curiously. Though Alice suddenly nodded along with his bizarre reaction. She kept her thoughts to herself. Yo. No. Nonko ko. It's just, uh, this, uh... Still gawking. His voice stuck in his throat. He was blissfully unaware that the shock he was experiencing was the direct result, the, the direct result of his emotional state. Just spit it out already. God, I wish your weird reactions made sense sometimes. Does Alice have something on her face, or? Alice looked on in silence. He was not confused, or in a daydream, that much he could tell, but this frozen look was by all accounts a first for Sojiro. So, what is it then? Oh, yeah. Kore nan da kedo. Oh, uh, this thing here. Aozaki, video te do tsukaun da? How exactly do I use it? Shaking his head to regain his composure. Sojiro pointed to the VCR. A VHS player sat on a shelf beneath the TV. What? You want to record something? Alko walked over and crouched next to Sojiro in front of the TV. Yeah. Uh oh. No, I just borrowed a video from Konomi, but it won't play. Oh, if it's from Konomi, this could be. This could be unfavorable for you, Sojiro, so you better hope that this fucking video doesn't work, man. Uh oh. <laughs> well, for starters, the TV isn't turned on. Please be like Die Hard or something like that. Please <laughs> I hope that I hope it's like a movie, like a like like I said, like Die Hard or what movie came out in the fucking eighties? I don't know. Dukes of Hazard, there you go. With the click, the TV flickered alive. Next, you have to switch to the video input. 
木の実くんのことだからテープ頭から録画してると思ったけど。That's weird. It's all dark. Knowing Kinomi, I'm surprised the recording doesn't start from the very beginning. During this time period, videotapes were still rather expensive. Therefore, it was only natural for people who did not want to waste a single second on the tape's 120 minute capacity. Especially considering how serious he is about his hobbies. Oh well, we'll have to fast forward. Don't fucking fast forward. Aoko picked up the small remote and quickly pushed the button marked F W D forward.、Hmm? The VCR beeped in, pro in protest. With several clicks and thuds, there was an empty whir from within the machine. Don't look at me. I didn't break it, I think. The vast majority of people who say this are actually very prone to destroying electrical equipment. But that was a separate matter. Um, there's no tape in here. As soon as the words left her lips, it all made sense. Tape? Tape. Sojuro imagined adhesive tape, clearly confused. Sojuro, Kinomi kun kara nani ka watasare na katta? Sojuro, did Kinomi give you something? Watasare ta kedo. Ora, table no ue. You mean that thing on the table?、Uh... Though she should have been used to it by now, she caught herself wondering if Sodra was being stupid、uh, deliberately. Kinomi kun ga nante itta ka, oboete ru? Sodra, what exactly did Kinomi say? Do you remember? Tape ka ste yaru kara, ie ni kaet tara video o miro, to. Yeah, he said, I'll totally, I'll totally lend you this tape. When you get home, just watch the TV. ね、Great. So he left out the most important part. Ah. Honestly, this is so sad it's almost scary. Just when I thought you could be normal, how do you make it through a day is a mystery to me. Well, did you forget that he grew up in the mountains? Exasperated, Alko fetched the tape in question. It was labeled Wild, King Wild Animal Kingdom African Adventure. Is that real? I'm, I, I'll look that up, but if something unsavory pops up, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. To Alko, this knocked Hosuke Kinomi down a level on the ratings, she,、uh, ratings file she kept with the student council. ね、このテープをデッキに入れて再生すればいいの。爪は折ってないから、録画ボタンだけは押さないようにね。OK。You put the tape in the VCR and push play. The tab isn't broken, so just be careful not to hit the record button. 爪とは What's a tab? ここ。テープの側面にへこみがあるでしょ。これをカバーしているのが爪。Right here. See the indent on the side of the tape here? This tab is this little plastic cover. If you snap this tab off, you can't record on this tape anymore. How can I explain this?、Uh, think of it like a notebook for class. If something is important, you can spray fix,、uh, fixative over the page so it can't be erased. It's like a physical barrier between,、uh, protecting a, against common human error. She inserted the tape into the VCR and handed the remote to Sojuro. Just a small interaction used up a fair bit of Alko's patience. Completely ignorant, Of Alko's feelings, Sojuro gleefully pressed the play button. Ah, I thought I was going to be a little bit of 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 a
クマを倒す修行でもしてたとか言わないでしょうね。What were you doing up there in the mountains? Don't tell me you were some karate master training against bears or something. No, he was probably trying not to fucking die of, you know, of starvation and freezing to death. How about that, Aoko? Whether or not she knew this was rude, Sotro glanced at her with disdain. それはもしかして俺をバカにしてるのか Was that an attempt to insult me? 心外ね。事実バカにしてるんだけど。あ、um, you mean just now or all the other times? Alko answered unapologetically. On the TV, a crocodile's yawning mouth appeared. そんなバカな話があるもんか。なんでクマを倒すために修行しなくちゃいけないんだ。Don't be ridiculous. Besides, why would anyone want to train against bears? Sojuro turned toward the TV in a huff. Perhaps because of his rare outburst, as he turned, to face, as he turned face to face with the gaping maw of a crocodile on the TV, he fell backwards in surprise. Alko unpursed her lips upon seeing this, delighted. It was relieving to see this boy disarmed. Kedo, Aozaki, Kono Kikai, Zibun Hokori got smote the Kedo, Soji was t a y i n o k a Hey, Aozaki, these machines have gone kind of dusty. Don't you clean them? Watashiwa Amaritska Naishi, Arisua Minai Kara, Imama de Hopot de Tatakeo. Why bother? I hardly ever use them. And Alice doesn't watch TV, so they've never seen Star Wars. That's crazy. Dame Moto de Training Yoni Catemora Tandakedo, Akichata. Image de Donica de Kirimondai Janakata, the Yuka. I bought some exercise videos to train with, but got bored of them. Who would have thought you actually need to do exercise instead of just watching the damn thing? It, okay. <laughs> It's an exercise video. Alco shrugged at her past. Super, what? Superficially? Really? I don't know how you say that. And Sojuro was led to believe yet another falsehood about modern life that VCRs would go out of fashion. No, they will. Not until like the early 2000s, at least. Well, then, we're off. Try not to burn the place down to the ground. And in case you were wondering, I know you were lying about going to work tonight. Alko said, smiling as she walked out of the drawing room. Oh. Her grin was the cheap shot that left Sojuro speechless. As he scratched his cheek, he was reminded how she was not someone to be trifled with. After watching the end of the drama between the,、uh, the other two, Alice made for the reception area as well. Left alone in the room, Sojuro took his seat on the sofa. Well, it was certainly not easy making everything run smoothly around these parts. Until they came back, he could enjoy his crocodile watching in peace. Alright, the hustle and bustle of the city. They took the subway from Misaki for six stations. From there, they rode another three stops by express train. About an, after about an hour, Aoko and Alice arrived in Arisaka Station. While Misaki was a mixture of old and new architecture, Arisaka was a brand new town built in accordance with the recent government ordinance. It was though as an entire town full of tall buildings sprouted up in the middle of nowhere. It was near December, or was near the end of December, in the middle of winter break. Even the bustling plaza of Misaki was quiet compared to Arisaka in the evening. Whether its huge mall full of countless specialty stores, or its crowded multi purpose auditorium, there was really There was really something for everyone here. For that reason, beyond its local residence, Arisaka Station was crowded with people from far and wide. Cool. That must be their fancy new performance art center. It's supposed to have the biggest concert hall in the prefecture. I wonder what it looks like inside. Look how much grander it is than the buildings around it. They made their way to the aquarium, weaving through the crowds. Alko had might have been used to the city life, but Alice was silently anxious. The people passing by must have thought this pale girl out of place, which Alice happened to agree with. Lying in the city, a big artist, more, I need you to. Pink Trade. 
が入ってないちょっとこれ日本初ライブよアリス Oh, it says a big artist is coming summer for, of next year. Oh my god, it's Pink Trudy. Alice, this says it'll be their first live appearance in Japan. Alko exclaimed, overcome by excitement. This kind of pop rock band was right up Alko's alley, but naturally, Alice did not seem very interested. So, they are. セレモニーに予定されているポーランド楽団の方が驚きだと思うけど。I'm more amazed by the Polish orchestra they've invited to open for them. 随分とお金がかかっているようね。This must be costing them a fortune. I just noticed her little hat there. 本当、懲りない人。How incorrible. In... That's it. Uncorrit. Yeah, that's fuck it. I'm not going to pronounce that. Alko cursed under her breath before hurrying them along. Underneath the construction map, read, with the support of the Kuonji group. The aquarium they were looking for was on the top floor of a massive building. Who the fuck has an aquarium on top of a building? What? That's wild. That's not normal here in Florida. I can tell that for a fact. As far as I know. Maybe it was because it was no longer a new attraction. Or perhaps it was because the first floor cinema drew the crowds. But with only a few people scattered around the entrance, the atmosphere inside was very calm. Not quiet, but desolate, and far removed from the hustle and bustle outside. Perhaps they were going for that museum like vibe. Alice quietly caught her. A breath staring in awe. Like a child seeing the circus for the first time. Her eyes were wide with. In, in a, what, what? Her eyes were wide in anticipation and wonder. It's to the lady's liking, I see. Good, good. I guess Sojuro's idea wasn't totally off the mark then, huh? Alko found herself smiling as well. There was a certain joy in seeing Alice's wonderment. Not really. I just find rooftop aquariums to be kind of novel. I didn't even know they fucking existed. According to the guide on the wall, the entrance to the aquarium was nearly as big as the Kuonji Mansion's foyer. The outdoor penguin show was apparently suspended due to the star penguin, Flippy, going un undergoing treatment for an injury. Bro, it's a penguin. It's not Cristiano Ronaldo. What the fuck? An unfortunate set of affairs, but one that did not stop Alice from continuing to read over the guide. Apparently, she was quite familiar with penguin shows. Then. <laughs> said like someone who cannot believe what they saw. Alice quietly whimpered, as if holding back a scream. Hey, something the matter? Alko said, still looking at the floor plan. It was rare to see Alice getting so emotional outside of the mansion. For some reason, she was trembling. Nothing seemed terribly off about the aquarium's offerings. There's no giant tortoises. They have tortoises at aquariums? I think they would, yeah. Eh? No, what? Hanashi got to go, Aoko. Those did all come in a tenji space and a nine. It's all wrong, Aoko. Why is there no giant tortoise exhibit? Those did the Soria Zogamegurani not a more hot on the Likujo Sabbath, the Karajana, Okishi. Why? I don't know. Are giant tortoises even aquatic? Maybe it's because they take up too much space. Pengi wine? <laughs> the, way, the way the actress said that, that was funny. Why though? They have penguins. It's not fair. Look, they even have a dolphin. This is absurd. Yeah, it's an aquarium. It was a bitter pill for Alice to swallow. 
The idea that they did not have a giant tortoise, despite having a dolphin, had Alice's eyes hot with indignation. Ah, uh, uh, now that you mention it. Penguin to Iruka are Teban Nanuni, Nazi Zokametaki has a Sarenoka. Chotosta Nichijo no Otosiana, eh? If penguins and dolphins are standard fare, you'd have thought they would have at least a giant tortoise. What were they thinking? Alko said, certain something like a giant tortoise would be boring and unpopular. She was sensible enough to read the room, however, and kept her thoughts to herself. Alice, Kotchi. Let's go, Alice. We have tickets, so we can skip the line. After a moment, a few moments after the giant to tortoise fiasco, okay, presenting the tickets they received from Sojuro, they headed toward the once popular entrance. From the entrance gate, the corridor stretched into a dark hallway completely illuminated in blue. Figures and faces became mere silhouettes in the, in the darkness. Not a darkness born for a magecraft, but a man-made area of twilight. A world of shadow and blue, the only light being from the illuminated tanks. The two witches continued walking down the artificial ocean corridor, water tanks-like windows into hundreds of different worlds, each with their own separate temperature and environment. A snapshot of the same place at different times. Mesmerized by the refracting images of the ocean floor, conversation grew sparse. So, that reminds me, Alice. You have this huge mansion without a pool. What's up with that? Figures. You come to an aquarium, and that's what you think about. Wanting superfluous things is a bad habit of yours, Aoko. I hope I said that correctly. Oh, a pool isn't. Fuck. Whatever that word is. Isn't super to put Fuck, how do you say that shit, man? I hate when they do this to me. Doesn't matter, don't care. Besides, aren't pools more common in England and Japan? They are in America. Or, could it be that you can't swim? I spent enough time in a swimsuit. I often swam in the lake as a child. I've never once lost a race to our big St. Bernard. St. Bernard? Alice, a St. Bernard? Wait, don't tell me. You had trouble with your breathing, didn't you? Ugh, spare me the swimming lesson. Crawl, butterfly? The people who invented those were probably half fish anyways. Clack, clack, clack. Their pace was more delicate and solemn than a stroll along the beach. Their conversation continued, but was only particular for being in particular. And here, the only thing to do was look at blue screens. I'm proud of you, though. Leaving him alone in the house? You're not worried he'll go snooping to the West Wing, are you? He can't possibly be that foolish. Besides, it to save us the trouble if he did? It's not like that. I just don't think he's the type to break his word. That he was not. Oko nodded, her long hair waving back and forth. A certain gleam of surprise in her eyes. Onward, they meandered to the next aquatic world. Clack, clack, clack. 
水族館を初めて。By the way, is this your first time at an aquarium? これで二度目。昔、友達と二人で行ったきりよ。Second, I went, with, I went with a friend long ago. 嘘、本当 ?No way, really? 本当、六年以上も前、まだイギリスにいた頃。Yes, really. More than six years ago, when I was still in England. So, じゃなくて友達の方あんた友人はいないって言ったじゃない No, I mean the friend part. Damn, that's how you feel? I thought you said you didn't have any friends. 昔の話よ。私たち同じ名前だったの。That、oh, shit. was a long time ago. We even had the same name. So, I don't know if you're going to be able to do it. We used to play all the time, but we fell out of touch. So, I don't know if you're going to be able to do it. So, I don't know if you're going to be able to do it. That's right. Alice must be a pretty common name over there. Here, it's all Ryoko or Hanako and such. Eh. 青子とか赤子とか黒子とか白子みたいなものよ。Indeed. Our names reference in colors like Aoko, Akako, Koroko, or Shirako. Okay, I know A is blue, Aka is red. I don't know what Koro is. I'm gonna say purple. And then Shira, don't know what Shira is, so I'm gonna say yellow. There you go. If I got that correct, leave that down below in the comments. Or tell me what they are, because I'm not gonna look them up. 後半はみんな普通名詞なんですけど。They do all end in code, don't they? To each their own, a society of names. The swirling of the waters was dizzying, much like the hectic world of human, humans. Their hands swung back and forth as they walked towards the, neck, the next world. そういう青子は、彼をどうするつもりなの Incidentally, 青子 What exactly is your plan for him? Well, once our current issue is resolved and things calm down, I'll find the rune for erasing his memory. And he'll forget we've ever existed. He won't be a bother for much longer. So, I'm a bother to whom? Me? Eh? Ah, um, so, so, ni kimat t e r j a n a Takara de kono sakana kire yo ne. Nanka o y o g i t a k u n a t e k u r Alice, dine no natsua umi ni demo itte miokka. Hm? Uh, uh, you know, me and you. Wow, this fish is really pretty. It makes me want to swim. Hey, we should go to the beach next summer. Umi te. Ano umi. The beach. You mean by the ocean? Motion! Nats no umi titara, Shaknets no tayo, Snahama, Sui Hesen Nishism, you hit the ne. Of course, you know, fun under the hot, fun under the hot summer sun, sand between your toes, watching the sunset on the horizon. Kotoshua i k e n a k a t a k e d o Nine wa ishoni i k a n a We couldn't go this year, so why don't we go together next year? Akireta. Your optimism is, is exhausting. でもそうね夏まで生きていられたのならそういうこともあるかもしれない。But that does sound nice. If we manage to survive until next summer, that is. Clack, clack, clack. The two girls journey to the next oceanic wonder world. Mutually taken in the sights. The visitors to these winter waters had begun to leave, satisfied by their touring. The sound of their footsteps herald their farewell. An hour into the wayfaring sea voyage, losing themselves in a maze like corridors of seemingly endless exhibits, they somehow found themselves net onto the. Found themselves on the next floor. 
Alko had heard the aquarium was situated on the top floor and was shocked to find out there was yet another above it. It was luckily by design that the actual top floor can only be accessed from within the aquarium. Moments of intrigue such as this are what attractions are made of. Alice? Alice? Turning this way and that, she found Alice had disappeared. She had just been there, however, and Aoko took to looking for her. She soon found her nearby. Her white overcoat shone brightly in front of the dimly lit exhibit. She was staring motionless into the water tank. Jim was looked to be staring through it, distracted by something. What's wrong, Alice? Are you feeling okay? She spoke, hoping to snap her out of it. Alice's typically cold aura seemed to have all but left her. Is it a rare fish? This looks like the tank they use for all the fish that doesn't that don't fit anywhere else. Alice gave a non-committal response. Just ahead of her gaze was a single shadow. Wow, mambo. Wow, an ocean sunfish. Alice remained motionless, unresponsive to Aoko's sarcasm. She stood in silence, watching the poor little fish drifting li uh, listlessly in the tank where they put the fish that did not fit anywhere else. Here at the end of the hall. To put it lightly, sunfish were not especially pleasant to look at. When looking at one, it begged the question of what direction evolution wanted to to take with it. It looked like it swam using rudder-like fins on the top and of its top and bottom, but lacked the grace of other fish. Tualco. Its eyes, body, and strange movement, movements made it an awkward creature. But, I just looked it up. Yeah, I can see why. Should be perplexed by this fucking thing. They're called molas. But. Hey Alice, let's check out the whale shark exhibit over there. It sounds really exciting, don't you think? Alice, unmoved, fixated on the sunfish. It clumsily drifted around its tank, occasionally bumping to the glass as it turned. Aoko, this little one can't swim well. Alice extended her finger towards the glass, then retracted it, feeling childish. Well, whatever. I suppose sunfish have their own charm. It did not seem like Alice was going to budge. Resigning herself, Alko stayed with Alice while she stared at the cushioned shaped fish. Eh? <laughs> Huh. They have eyes like pufferfish. It also says here that the females can produce more eggs than any other known vertebrate, to 300 million at a time. Pretty neat. The babies become prey to other fish, so in a way giving birth to so many is a means of survival for them. The Waoko seem to be Taken in by the biological details of the fish, Alice could not care less. She was lost in the ebb and flow of emotions between wonder and woe with every clums uh, clumsy bump of the fish into the glass. When, out of nowhere, she softly spoke. About before. Before? Before when? About him. About leaving the house in his care. It seemed like Alice had returned to her normal self. That cold aura. 
Whenever inside the mansion, uh, mansion, inside the mansion or out, that stubborn chill that pushed people away was back. I haven't changed my mind. He still oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. He's still a complete unknown. How can I trust someone I know nothing about? I guess. But then why let him? Because oh. Because I know you, Aoko. You always make the right decision. So I'm trusting your judgment on the matter. It was true. She did not know Sojiro, nor had any intention to. But because of her trust in Aoko, she could trust in Aoko's decision to allow him to stay. It seemed Alice was challenging her own feelings. She said, uh, she said she could not trust someone she did not know. Or in other words, she wished to trust a person, and in order to do so, she needed to know more about them. Well, I don't really know how to respond to that, Alice. So, also, I had no idea you trusted me that much. I did trust you. I may not be fond of you, but I trust you. Because we're partners in crime, aren't we? All right, I think that's where we're going to end it today, ladies and gentlemen. Looks like the girls have finally decided to make peace with one another and have a nice day at the aquarium. All due to Sojiro's expense, but, you know. <laughs> but hopefully you guys did enjoy. And if you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. It is your boy, White Album. I will see you guys next time.